Okay, now you've probably today the first two videos in basically of recent times coming into and basically remember knowledge is not free. Okay, uh, to go to whatever I decide to name my certain modern day internet knowledge college uh, nonprofit. It'll be named so forth, so such, and being able to branch since the powers to be have showed me how they branch off in even spying on Beano Black that the idea that I will spider myself in my colleges and in also in my nonprofits. So just uh, because of stuff like that, which basically flip a coin, it's either low disk space or it's you got it. So the most interesting find today is the other meatball the other meatball. That's right. I don't still don't know how many we actually have. Now, in our solar system, which basically when you see it go to black, you see what's outside of our solar system. Okay? Not to a thousand percent, but on a theory wise, that when we've seen the black action, and basically that's going to be another video. So basically I'm going to be making one that's going to be talking about the solar system edge, okay, of our sun, okay, and then also the connection of those stars, our suns that we know of, large, like uh, Rigel Cantaris A and B, which uh, then we have to figure out the interaction between these solar systems in these Van Allen belts and so such, and i.e. the meatball, which is doing the darkness to the sun over here, but then we also have the huge meatball, and it's all light curvature. And yes, it's a combination of more than just one meatball, okay? So you're going to end up seeing cowboy meatball down here, that I call it, okay? And then basically, yes, I do somewhat know you, they're going to come into stupid, well, it's what we called it. Okay, well, why haven't you told the general public NASA hasn't disclosed it, okay? NASA is the overlord of the United States of America, you know, as far as talking about the stars and the solar system and everything. You see what I'm saying? And see, there, there can be where it's idea that, yeah, there's not really a reality of it all because it's just stuff that's in space. Uh, that's what MacArthur said with the idea that we, the next world war, he didn't say it was the war to end all wars, but the idea that it'll be in space. So the space race is on big time. And you're seeing what you've been seeing on the videos today, and you'll end up seeing it too because I'll hit play. But we're going to zoom in on this here because you can see another meatball. Massive things makes you realize how small Earth is just by looking at the sun. But then when you see how small the sun is compared to looking at what we've got up here because we get with the light blockage, the light curvature of the, of the sun getting messed with, even back further, we might be getting close to what object that we know that NASA and basically astrologers, astronomers, look, astrologers, they had to take their old records and put it into modern day astronomy. Okay, modern day astronomy, we can laser find things and pinpoint things. Now, NASA's known where this huge thing is before because this can't be the first time that they've ever seen it. Now, they might, I think it would be a pretty smart idea to hurry up and say that there's been great finds in space. Everything that's going on at Mars and NASA is very busy, and uh, space, it's the final frontier for damn sure because space is infinite, okay? It's huge, as I've showed you in videos before. I don't need to give you an explanation of zooming in on the uh, galaxies, the solar system, and zooming out from the solar system to the asteroid belt on out into infinite space, okay? Which... NASA's got probes out there and we've been mapping stuff and they just NASA's constantly mapping things every day they know about all this stuff it's time to start disclosing more of the layers that's close to earth okay they keep you in little poofahs of the idea of a planet here a planet there now I know I'm talking a lot but it's a lot of information okay uh, it's modern day knowledge you're on the internet you're getting actual factual from Beano Black there's not a lot of actual factual out there now this is the telescopes, satellites up in space that were beautiful. Our tax dollars were really getting our money's worth. Okay, so you have this that's undeniable right there. And I can zoom in a little bit more. We'll go ahead and go 555. Five, five. Oh, what did I get there? I, I screwed up on the zoom. So anyway, I'm not going to take time to uh, we'll go custom again. We'll go 
555 and hit enter. We'll even do the evil 666. We'll even maybe do evil 888 on this and zoom in on this and then we'll zoom back out. Okay, so now we're going to do the, Z, the evil 666. Everybody's with these numbers and psyoping everybody and stuff like that. So, anyway, the psyops and the brainwashers will continue. You cannot fight them, you just ignore them, okay? Signs of basically, oh, an evil person. Well, Hitler's dead, okay? And then he wasn't just him, he was a pawn for a bunch of rich and powerful people, okay? Uh, World War I and World War II are basically European civil wars, and the United States of America got richer than hell off of supplying people, blowing each other's brains out, just like other foreign entities got made a massive amount of money, and domestic ones also made a massive amount of money off the civil American war of us blowing each other's brains out, okay? So society's waking up, and we've got to get out there in space, because we need to spread out, okay? That's the actual factual, Okay. The world needs to spread out. It is, the, it is the agenda, and I don't understand why they don't say it more often straight out. Bino Black has no problem with giving you the actual factual, because it's what's going to happen. We are going to spread out in space so that we don't blow each other's brains up all the time. So anyway, here we go. Though this is all out there. There's layers and layers and layers. So we get an exposure to the idea that there's something huge. And no matter what, okay, even if you say that, okay, this is not some massive object back out there and these stars are in front of it. Yes, these stars are in front of this stuff, okay? Does this stuff hit it, eat it up or anything like that? No, it's got its path. Now, every once in a while, if something falls out of its path that's already been done over billions of years, then something might go. And then every once in a while, all the light flashes that we get from Soho at the sun... And I don't have to give you examples, but here's a good example right there because we got the cowboy meatball, okay? Because uh, that's what basically I'll keep on calling the one because I'll be able to proportionally integral derivatives keep an eye on, on the damn thing because of speed and so forth and so such, okay? So we'll go down here and hit play. And if anybody's been missing it, I'm uploading the videos as fast as I can today. And actually, I think it'll just... Uh, there we go. I got it on slow. And then you see that basically this shows up down there. We can, we can all, you can proportionally integrally with, because we can get the map of how we get the shot every day. And that's how NASA does it too. They have laser pinpointedness. And you've seen the shadow of Venus in the dark and everything like that. And yes, the light's going to affect the camera and so forth. But you really don't get what they say a camera flare. That's actually an atmosphere of Venus. And probably maybe there's volcanoes on Venus. Now, there's one other thing I can put in this video real fast that we're going to find as it's going through slow. There is an object between, you watch here on Venus, and there is an object between the sun, okay? And this is the cowboy meatball down there. And there was some interesting action over top of there, too. So there's going to be a lot more than one video off of this. And that's our comet moving away there, okay? There's a comet uh, C 2012 V4, I believe, is what it is. We pretty much proportionally have it down. There's going to be a dark object that's going to show up on Venus. Okay? And I'm going to try to save some tape time and go ahead and zoom in on that. Because at a certain point in time, through all the CME action, the cowboy meatball there, and I've already showed you the other meatball up here, and then that comet moving out there. And there's, remember, there's massive distances. So tr it's, all, it's basically trillions of miles in quadrillion trillion or whatever number you want to get that the idea that when we can see off into space through a lens straight away okay and things are in front of things these stars are all in front and around between the camera and the cowboy meatball the cowboy meatball in its orbit that it goes around it has because it's already orbited so many times in billions of years that that's majority now there's this the start of that that is between the sun and venus there okay because we get the CME action to end also the flaring of the atmosphere off of Venus and all the electrical activity, you end up seeing that there is an object between, and it's pretty damn good size. It would have to be bigger than the moon, or at least we know Mercury is the same size as the moon, and Mercury has somewhat of an atmosphere because of the moisture that keeps getting sweated off of it. Basically, Mercury's getting sweated to death all the time. It's getting dehydrated, okay? All the time, Mercury's getting dehydrated, whatever moisture it has on it. And there you see that we have that. Even if it's energy coming off of not the supergiants, because the supergiants are not in that direction. There might be some supergiant stars over there that are separated, but most all the supergiant stars are out behind the sun, okay? But then we have 360 degrees when you're dealing in space, so then you have to plot everything from that, okay? So, today, you see what's been causing the light, to basically the sky to go black, 
and only and as great as you can see more than likely what's probably off out of our solar system okay because more than likely this stuff that's black back there may not be magnetically connected but then again it could be the separation look at it this way you see all those stars now so when it goes black like that those stars may be the only stars that are actually in our solar system okay so and NASA is smart enough to be working with this and if they haven't figured it out and then I'm the smartest physicist of them all okay because basically I am an asshole electrician engineer and this is all actual factual you got a cowboy meatball there you got the light you got it when it goes black so very much all these far off stars you can see in the solar system next to the Sun that basically are our solar system but see that all of its attached the magnetical of our Van Allen belts of our solar system are somewhat attached because it's all clung together in the Milky Way galaxy see we're not falling under the Milky Way galaxy the Sun is not falling under the Milky Way galaxy so it's all electronically and there's our black object check that out see that there I'm gonna pause that okay we're gonna pop up to 400 real fast take a look at that object now that object is guaranteed basically since we know the shadow thing that the idea that th this object is no matter what is between the Sun and also if you watch the shadows there's also going to be a large object that actually shadows in front of Venus okay because basically the sunlight gets cut off and we see a shadow that's basically there is an object somewhere between the Sun and Venus that is shadow wise is the same or you're gonna see the actual size and it's gonna be pretty much you watch right here now this here is no matter what by what we know for fact of shadows in space is the same size so that no matter what there is something between the Sun in Venus it's that size okay and now what I'm gonna do is also go down and show you by knocking down here I'm gonna save taped now either the we're gonna get the, the actual factual on as you can see I'll step and basically I'm gonna be sucking the earth back the the Sun back in and you'll see that but check to see this here and we're gonna go back up and zoom in and take a look at that there's something that's huge between us and Venus in the same platitude okay because basically I'm gonna step and as you can see I'm drawing the Sun back the CME back in okay and I can even do it one more and actually get it to a bigger size and you get to see the shadow of Venus you see it's the same doggone size because right there in the shot with the light being just right you get to see either the shadow of Venus or like I say there's an object possibly between and basically I'm just gonna zoom in on that because we know that an object puts off its exact same sh size shadow wise okay so basically that's the shadow of something between the Sun and we've been seeing remember we've been seeing something that's but we've I've proved that that's stars that's between the Sun at Nehemiah station on earth you're seeing okay so either this is the shadow and we've also seen the shadow on the backside over here of Venus okay in with this light action that we're getting and no this is not that's the comet down there okay so relax on that so basically now this isn't the exact this is somewhat what you would call of when we get because we have this light change that we're going through with the cowboy meatball coming around and everything like that right okay so you have to deduct by th reasoning physicists we need to put our brains on this is there an object on the same platitude between the Sun and Venus and it's putting this shadow off or is this just Venus's shadow but as you see Venus stays illuminated as we see this shadow and I pretty much conclude that it's basically the shadow of Venus off into space getting caught in the camera of course because it's in space also visible and it's the same size because shadows of objects in space are the same damn size so there's the size of Venus okay somewhat but it's also showing so you get to see and we see the luminosity we see the brightness and it makes it look Venus look way bigger now Venus is close to the camera because remember what shot we're at we are at a we're not at B okay so Venus looks huge but we get a good size idea of seeing exactly what Venus looks like size wise close to this in the meatball proportional integral derivatives we can figure out size of the cowboy meatball here and everything okay so it's study on ongoing and NASA does it and we can do it privately at home also okay so basically pumping up to 400 there you go you have got a shadow but also we've seen the object that is gotta be between us and the Sun 
proportional integral derivatives. That shadow that I showed you a second ago thus proves two magneticals in this objects between there and this.